Okay, so let's begin with HTML. To recap what we talked about uh, previously, HTML kind of is like the nouns of a web page. It is the structure of the content. It's the what is on the page. This is a button, this is a form, this is a link, but it is not the style, that's CSS, it's not the behavior, that would be JavaScript. So we're gonna start with HTML, then we'll add on some CSS, then we'll add on JavaScript, and they'll all be happy together, and everything will be lovely. But first, let's talk about HTML. So HTML is an example of something called a markup language. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is not a full-blown programming language, or what most people would consider a programming language, where we implement uh, complex logic, and we don't have anything like that. With HTML, it's just about marking up a document. So if you think of that term, marking up, on the right side of the, the slide here, I've got a poem, a William Blake poem, one of my favorites, being marked up. Uh, let's say by my middle school teacher or something in red ink. So there are notes, there are, in this case, there's a, a little circle of a misspelled word. It's being annotated. Additional information is being added onto the pure content. That's exactly what HTML does. HTML is a language or a syntax that we use to mark up documents, web pages. So if you think of something like a scientific research paper, which is actually exactly where HTML uh, came from, back in 1989 1990, uh, HTML was created to help describe the structure of academic research papers and share them across the very early internet. For those of you who haven't seen many research papers, they have some particular formatting um, where we have things like bolded text and uh, numbered lists and bulleted lists. We have in this case, links between different pages and different sections. We have italicized text. We have paragraphs of text where they're separated out with some space between them. Uh, just, you know, a paragraph like you would have in any other paper. But under all this, if we remove that, if we strip it away, it's just text content. And the goal of HTML is to take text content like this and somehow mark it up with some structure so that we could say something like, this part, if we take a look here, the questions you investigated, that's italicized and bolded, and it's in a bullet point. But if we look at the content, it's literally just text. So how would we indicate to somebody, this is supposed to be bolded, this is supposed to be italicized, and there should be a bullet point here. And when I say indicate to somebody, really the goal of HTML is to indicate to your web browser that this should be a bullet point and bolded and italicized. Remember back to uh, our discussion around HTTP requests, when we load a web page, or specifically when our browser loads a web page, it gets a response from a server somewhere that includes HTML, as well as CSS and JavaScript. It's just information, it's text. Think of it as, I mean, it is ones and zeros at some point along the way, but by the time it makes it to our browser, it looks like this, right? It's just text. But that text has to include all of the structure for the page, and your browser needs to know the rules, in this case of HTML, it knows the rules so that it can display this. It knows how to make something bold, and it knows the HTML syntax that indicates something is bold, or a link, or a bulleted list, or whatever it is. So that is where HTML came from originally, was the same issue, but with academic research papers, and sharing research papers, and sharing the structure. So there are many different ways we could mark this up. Um, in person, when I'm teaching this at, at boot camps in San Francisco, I actually have students break out and come up with their own strategies for how you would do that. I mean, if I wanted to say that this was italicized, or this right here is italicized, one option would be something like, you know, um, italics, and then whatever you want, pointing an arrow to the italics. Uh, but then the problem there is, well, how do you know where that ends? Where does the italics end? Is it based off of the lines? So this entire line is italicized? Okay, but then what if we also have bold? This is bolded, the entire line is bolded, or just a portion of this is bolded. It gets difficult to come up with a, a better approach than what we have with HTML. So what is that approach? Well, to write HTML, we use what are called HTML elements. Uh, and there are quite a few of them, things like uh, image elements or form elements or link elements or heading elements, bold things, italicize. There's lots and lots of things that we can do, but we define them using this syntax here, this general pattern where we wrap a tag, an opening tag, this right here, and a closing tag around some content. So in the next video, we'll start writing some HTML. 
but the general recipe looks like this. If I wanted to indicate this is supposed to be italicized, there is an actual uh, italics element called the I element. We'll actually talk about it. It's a bit it's not controversial. It's a bit confusing. But if I wanted this whole thing to be italicized, I could write this right here. Now, I'm not technically writing HTML right now. Uh, I'm not running this or opening this in my browser. I'm just showing you the general idea. We wrap this syntax, in this case the I tags, around some content to indicate that it's italicized. So not that different from that approach that I showed you here where we had, I don't know, what did we do, italics like this and an arrow? It's kind of the same principle. It's just more concise and a lot more angle brackets. Um, but there we go. We are marking up this document to indicate this is italicized. But the reality of HTML is that we often end up with a whole bunch of different elements. There are quite a few of them, and we often nest them together. So we could have this portion be bolded, and to do that, it's as simple as I want a bold tag opening and closing around investigated for whatever reason. I don't think that's what we're actually trying to do. We wanted this to be italicized and bolded and on a bullet point. We're ignoring that. But the key concept here is that we are marking up some document, just like this here where we're marking up uh, an essay or a plagiarized poem. We're going to be marking up web documents, actual content to be displayed on a page. So we'll be able to do things like make this a paragraph of text or make this an image, make this a link to Facebook, make this a bold element or a bold piece of text, make this a heading. That's all stuff we can do with HTML, hypertext markup language. So now that we've set the stage for what it is, it's time for us to actually play around with it and learn some of those elements I discussed.